Hi, I'm Lily Sue. And in this video, we'll be talking about one of the essential foundations of 3D modeling in Rhino, using line tools. We'll touch upon how to create two-dimensional vector lines, how they can so very easily snap and align onto each other intuitively. We'll also go over exporting vector lines, which can convert into Illustrator files, DWG toolpaths, vermilion, laser cutting, and other types of fabrication. This lesson will be for absolute beginners, with the only prerequisite being that you know how to navigate in Rhino, as in orbiting, zooming, and panning. Let's get started. Why learn about line tools in Rhino? First and foremost, there are some really great snapping features that are intuitive to use, especially in this program. You can use lines as guides to help you conceptualize when you are still unsure on specific dimensions, and conversely, using lines as measuring markers upkeeps accuracy. Lines in Rhino output into vector formats. They can be converted into Illustrator files as lines, DWG formats for milling, laser cutting, architectural applications, and more. Drawing lines and curves are the bare bones of making any 3D surfaces and 3D objects in Rhino are all created from surfaces. Now, what is a line? A line is a mark or band that stretches between two points. The line command in Rhino follows the same definition. It is a command that generates only one straight mark between two points. The polyline command is for creating consecutive lines. This is the command that we will be using because it is more versatile. Especially if we first make a line and decide we want to continue making more lines from our current endpoint. To perform the polyline command, we can simply type the word polyline or press the polyline button in the toolbar palette. We can also do the same thing by clicking on the curve menu and selecting polyline. Notice I have given further options for start point. If I now type in 0, I will be starting my line from the origin 0, 0, 0 in the x, y, and z axis. Spacebar is the same thing as enter or return. You press it to tell the computer that you are done typing, and you are now submitting the command. So after typing 0, I press spacebar to enter this information. It is important to keep aware of what the command prompt is asking. Now that I have established the origin of my line, I can optionally enter a length, then an endpoint. So I can type in a number such as 5, spacebar, or 5 millimeters, or 5 in inches, spacebar, and Rhino will recognize any of these units of measurement and change the length accordingly. When I type in just 5, the length is the unit of measurement for the template. So if I am in the millimeters template, then it would be 5 millimeters, for example. I can now click down to end the line. And there we go. We created our first line in Rhino. Let's try that again. I'm going to click down somewhere, anywhere. Are you snapping to the grid every time you click? Hitting Escape allows you to opt out in the middle of any command. In this case, as you can see as I zoom in, that I am snapping onto the grid. I don't want to do that normally, so I'm going to go down here and toggle off the Grid Snap button. Once again, I'm going to click down somewhere, anywhere, to start my line without snapping to the grid. But if I now hold down Shift with my pinky finger, and hover around the cardinal directions on a compass, I will snap 90 degrees in any direction. I will click, thereby establishing the other endpoint of the line. Now I'm going to press spacebar to end the line. Perhaps I want to create a second line that starts exactly from the midpoint or from the endpoint of the existing line. How would I do so? Rhino has this awesome feature called Object Snaps. It's on the left here. You can check the boxes based on what you want to snap to. I'm going to snap to the below by default. These are features that I always want to snap to. Endpoint, near, midpoint, and intersection. Now I'm going to try using my Object Snaps by making the letter F. So I'm going to click. Hold down Shift, hover in the correct direction, 
click down horizontally where I want the endpoint. Hold down Shift. I'm going to continue eyeing the general dimensions to make the letter F. Continue to hold down Shift, hover, click, let go. Hold down Shift, hover, click, let go, and repeat. Now when I get to the end where I want to place the point where I started, notice when I hover over my start point, because my object snap settings, since I checked off the snap to end point, I will get this pop-up that says end. And now when I click down, I have made a closed curve. Closed curves are curves where the start point and end point are not discernible. As if the curve were a snake, but the snake is eating its tail. Closed curves are necessary if you are exporting this line to mill or laser cut. If you think about it with laser cutting, for example, the point of it is to cut a pattern and pop out the shape. The curve to program the toolpath has to be closed in order for a complete cutout. Let's move on to a more complicated letter, the letter A. I'm going to start with a diagonal line, and I'm going to eye it. To make the next line parallel, I'm going to select my current line, then type Offset. The command prompt would prompt me to select lines to offset, but I have my line selected already, so I just press spacebar. Then I type in a measurement to offset from, then click down. And A is symmetrical, so once I have this, I'm going to mirror the other side. I can type the command mirror and follow the directions of the command prompt. I'll select what I need to mirror, the Rhino prompts me to define the axis of mirroring, so I will click the first point, which for me is the midpoint of this line, then the end point of the axis. Now I'm going to finish making the letter A through using the command polyline, and close up this letter. What if I have an extra little something that I want to get rid of? The split command requires you to select what you want to cut, then the object that is doing the cutting. I will then go back and select what I don't want and press delete. To export, click down and drag a window over your shape to select. And then go to the File, Export Selected, then choose your file type and file name. These lines we made can be exported as an Illustrator file, DWG, or DXF. These are all file types that carry vector line information. If exporting an Illustrator file, make sure you're converting the units of measurement correctly. If a DWG or DXF, it will depend on the template you're in. You want to let your recipient of the file know which unit of measurement it is in. So if I'm in the millimeters template right now, and I'm going to give it to somebody to laser cut this file for me, I will let them know that the DWG, for example, is in units of millimeters. As you can see, Rhino's Object Snaps has a very controlled hoverover system. Typing in units of measurement makes working with dimensions fast. The commands that we went over allows us to make a number of quick adjustments for what we need. Best of all, what we have done can now be used in Illustrator or exported in a ready format for digital fabrication such as CNC milling, laser cutting, and more.